Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the data on Q33. A cute little 1 to 76 scale RC car that features full proportional steering, relatively big rubberized wheels, a built-in 1S rechargeable battery, and the hard and durable plastic shell. The Q33 is available in different colors and two versions, FPV and non-FPV. In this video, I'm going to test the FPV version, which features an FPV camera that is connected to a four channels 25 milliwatts VTX. The non-FPV version doesn't feature this camera and VTX model, and the other differences are that the FPV version features a bigger battery than the non-FPV version, and of course, it is a little bit heavier as it features the VTX and camera model. In addition, both versions are available with or without a radio transmitter, and the FPV version can be bundled with entry-level Daton branded FPV goggles, which are equivalent to the Ishin VR009 goggles. In terms of packaging, here is everything that comes inside the box of the FPV version of the Q33. So along with the car, which already has the VTX and camera model attached to it, you are getting a spare plastic shell, a keychain holder, which is a souvenir for Daton's 10th anniversary, a pretty long USB to JST cable, which is used for charging the car's battery, and a radio controller. Again, this radio controller is optional, but you should note that the Q33 is only going to work with this particular radio controller. I have tried the Turbo Racing radio controller, but it doesn't work, and at least currently, at the moment of shooting this video, it is not going to work with a multifunctional radio transmitter, so pay attention that you should only purchase the version that doesn't come with the radio controller in case you already have one. Here you can see the Q33 next to the Turbo Racing C81 and C73. Its dimensions are pretty much identical to the C81. It weighs 24.1 grams, so it is heavier than both C81 and C73, and that's due to the added weight of the VTX and camera model, as without it, it's going to weigh pretty much the same as the C81. As the Q33 doesn't feature back or front wheel suspension, it is better be used on even surfaces. The diameter of its front wheels is 11.7 millimeters, and the back wheels are bigger, and their diameter is 13.2 millimeters. On its bottom side, you can find an on and off button, which is also used for binding the car with the radio controller. For that, you will need to long press this button for three seconds, then the LEDs are going to start flashing, and once they do, simply turn on the radio controller when it is positioned next to the radio controller, and once the red LED is going to turn solid, it means that the bind procedure is complete. You should note that in case you purchased the Q33 with the radio controller, you don't need to do it as the radio controller is already bound with the car out of the box. Turning on or off the car is done by short pressing the on slash off button. The FPV version of the Q33 car features a 140 mAh 1S battery, which should provide you with about 20 minutes of runtime. It's going to take about 30 minutes to fully charge it, and the non-FPV version features a smaller 110 mAh 1S battery, which should provide you with about one hour of runtime. As for the all-in-one camera, it is encapsulated inside a protective material. After turning on the car, it is going to be automatically turned on. Switching between the four available channels is done by short pressing the button which is located on the top side of the all-in-one camera. As you can see, there is no indication of the battery voltage on the FPV feed. And basically, once the battery voltage is going to reach 3.3 volts, the all-in-one camera is going to be turned off. As for the radio controller, it is operated using two AA batteries which are not included. And in order to switch between the two available modes, you will need to press the multifunction button while powering it up. 
When the red LED is solid, it indicates that you are in beginner mode and the car is going to slow down while turning around and the throttle is going to be limited to 60%. And when the red LED is flashing, it indicates that you are in burst mode, which means that the throttle is not limited and the car is not going to slow down. In addition, you don't need to change between the two modes each time that you power up the red controller and the last mode is going to be in use when powering it up. In order to remove the canopy, in order to replace it, or because you need to access the internal components of the car, you'll need to unscrew these two screws. They are pretty small and you don't get any spare ones, so be careful not to lose them. Here you can see what it looks like after almost separating the shell from the car. And the reason that I said almost is because the camera unit is soldered to the main board, so in case you need to replace the shell, you will need to desolder it. And what I recommend to do, especially if you plan on switching between a canopy with an all-in-one camera and a one without it, is to cut the wires in between the camera and the main board, and adjust the connector, and then you'll be able to easily switch between the canopies. Keep in mind though, that when purchasing the car, you are given a 20 days period of warranty by Daton, so in case you are going to perform this mode, it's going to be at your own risk. Overall, after testing it out, I can tell you that in my opinion, the Daton Q33 is definitely a very fun toy to play with, its battery life is great, and since it is much easier to control it than a drone for example, it can be a very nice way of introducing FPV to your friends and family. The main downside that I found is that the car will tend to flip over when driving it fast and trying to turn around as its center of gravity is pretty high and I recommended to Dayton that on the next iteration of this car to try to lower it down as it will make the car more steady. Anyway, that's going to be it for my review of the Dayton Q33 Micro RC car. And by the way, I'm giving one away in an upcoming giveaway video, which should be up this weekend. So in case you're interested in participating in the giveaway, stay tuned. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.